Uh, it started last year, 2017, around the uh, early part of the year. Uh, apparently, uh, she began a attending church here, and uh, you know the parents and everything. They knew the pastor also. They didn't know him for a long time, but they just started attending church there in early 2017. Why did the parents trust him so much? I couldn't answer that. I, I, I wouldn't know. There was something in there about um, one of the ways they got trust was he had told her she had a demon inside. Can you talk about that at all? I mean, how, do you know anything about that? Yeah, it was one of the allegations where he was uh, telling her that she had a demon locked inside of her and that she also had uh, multiple personalities. Um, if one part of the report had mentioned that an interaction between them happened without her consent, so would we be wrong in saying that he raped her? Yes, he, he, was, he was charged with sexual battery. How did she end up uh, having the courage to come forward? I don't know the particulars on how she came forward. She did uh, tell her mother, and her mother brought her to Tarpon because they live out of county. So she brought her to the Tarpon Police Department where the allegations came forward. And uh, from there, we sent a deputy down and took our, our part of the report. And his reaction was? Uh, I wasn't there when that happened, but uh, of course, he denied it when they interviewed him. Uh, there were some inconsistencies in his statements. Uh, he does put himself alone with her, but he denied any sexual acts with her. How, um, this, I know it, this is disturbing when you just read through this. I, I mean, when, when you have to deal with something like this, somebody who's in a position of power and, and in the position to manipulate like this guy is accused of doing, um, what do you think as you're going through this investigation? Well, people, people put their trust in someone like a pastor, and it's something that, you know, as a parent and a child, they don't expect something like this to happen. But, you know, it's kind of obvious that he was, you know, it looks like he was grooming her, you know. So it's just a, uh, it's just a horrible situation and something that, you know, a uh, teenager and a parent should have to deal with. It's horrible. Do you think there may be other victims we don't know about yet? That's possible. Uh, we don't have anything at this moment, but there could be uh, other things coming up from uh, Tarpon's investigation. Does he have a family? I, I know he's married. I don't know if he's got children or not. Um, I, I realize he was the pastor of this church, but did they have multiple pastors? Was he like the, the head pastor, you know, and sometimes there's a hierarchy there, do you know? To my knowledge, he's the only pastor, like, from what I understand, they rent out that church from another church, and he has his own congregation, and he's the only pastor, to my knowledge. About how big is that congregation, do you know? I don't know. Are there, I assume, other teens or a lot of other teens in that congregation? There may be. I don't. I don't have those particulars. So, with him being out, what do you say to members of that congregation moving forward? Do your research on these guys. I mean, if you if you haven't grown up in a church and you know the pastor personally, do your research. You know, do your background checks. Ask them questions. You know, if you don't know these guys and they're just coming out of nowhere and opening up their own churches, you gotta you gotta do your due diligence on these guys and find out who they are. Before you can trust them, or what's in his background? Do you have any kind of criminal history? There is. Uh, we're still checking. Uh, we haven't found anything sexually related. I think there may be like a drug history there, but we're still looking into that now. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward here, I guess. Um, I mean, this is, which I'm using the words graphic when you read the, the affidavit. Is that, is that how you would describe it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty heinous, and it is graphic, you know, reading uh, 
the way everything happened. And it's over, you know, a period of time also. How's she doing? She seems to be doing all right. Good that he's off the streets now. Well, he's been released and he'll have a court date. You know, from my understanding, he's been, he's bonded out. So he'll have a, a court date coming up soon. Can you talk about the various locations where these assaults happen? Uh, supposedly in the back office at the church on several occasions, uh, in his vehicle in a public parking lot. Uh, there may be incidents at uh, her residence, which is out of county. And I know in the, in the affidavit there were a couple of witnesses listed and it kind of went into a little bit about what they saw. Uh, did anybody like catch them in the act or anything like that or, or see anything going on? From what I understand, nobody caught them in the actual act, but people saw them together, uh, whether walking down the road, you know, with his arm around her, or sitting like close to her by himself, you know, at the church. There were, you know, things that people saw that they didn't think was right, but they didn't weren't actually engaged in any acts at the time. They didn't say anything that they saw something they didn't think was right, or no. Um, and you may have touched on this before I came in and who, who was the, how did you guys first find out about this? The mom, she had told her mom and she had taken her, because they live out of county, taken her to the Tarpon Springs Police Department. And then part of the allegations were, most of them were within our jurisdiction. Were there some that were not? Yeah, there's potentially uh, uh, Tarpon Springs. And they have that aspect of that, of what they'll follow up on. Do you know how long he had been a pastor there? Uh, what did he do before? I don't have that information. I'm sorry. Okay. 